yes it's not, now it's okay good okay okay okay, okay sir okay. so okay so we'll uh, for what we'll do in this one hour is uh, we'll basically uh, have an overview of intellectual property rights uh, am i audible sir yes yes audible sir audible okay so we'll uh, go with an overview of intellectual property rights and we'll rush up through things which uh, may not be so necessary for you because this is a, a quite a lengthy presentation and what we'll do is first we'll go on with an introduction of intellectual property rights what patents designs and everything is all about how the office functions and what is patentable and what is not patentable and then we'll just talk about um, the i mean literally when you file a patent application what happens to the application i mean how will the application be processed and how it will be either granted or rejected i mean we we just go through the process and then when finally we'll end up with uh, a few of the slides which give uh, some emphasis on the latest uh, amendments on the patent rules or patent acts and Uh, a few things which will be helpful to you if at all you arrive, you stumble upon an invention or you come to patent office to file a patent i mean i'm sure which which you will be doing i mean which you are doing so i i really hope it will be helpful for you okay so what exactly is a proper um, industrial pro intellectual property intellectual property is nothing but i mean i'm just uh, rushing through the basics so that we can concentrate on the filing procedure and all okay so what exactly is uh, intellectual property basically property is uh, divided into tangible and, and intangible things tangible in, means in the sense it's something which can be perceived by the sense of touch and intangible in the sense you can't i mean you can't feel it by the sense of touch or something but it's there i mean it's it's your right so as you see it's uh, tangible in the sense it's land or something the perfect example is land or something it's your property and how do you protect your property your land your house or something how do you protect it by means of registration so that's ex exactly how uh intellectual property can also be protected if you just uh uh invent something you don't protect it and you and you uh disclose it to the public i mean there is a very high probability that the same will be copied and misused so you are going to lose your invention if you are not going to be protected and you are you're going to lose your money so all your effort will be in vain so that's what uh, intellectual property is all about in intellectual property is uh, basically divided into industrial property and copyrights and and again uh and industrial property you have a further division on patents designs and trademarks so okay so intellectual property uh, covers a broad arena of things whether be it technical things like inventions or literary and artistic works symbols names or anything i mean we'll see them each and everything is covered by a different kind of protection we'll see them one by one okay so any right which is associated with inventions or anything any rights which gives give, which is associated with intellectual property is called ipr that is intellectual property rights so as i told earlier intellectual property rights are nothing but which give the owner of the right protection from being copied or uh, misused in some way okay this is a very broad um, i mean a categorization of uh, industrial property intellectual property sorry so as you can see uh, the main thing there is patents patents cover for most of the things uh, along with trademarks trademarks are another important thing then when you take geographical indications so geographical indications what are that i mean they just refer to uh, anything which comes out of a particular place like tirupati laddu or uh, kanjipuram silk saree or something which the product is associated with the particular place trademarks are nothing but something which represent a product or 
something. I mean, co the Coca-Cola logo, something like that. Okay, copyrights. What are copyrights for? Uh, copyrights are essentially for uh, literary works. I mean, if you uh, if you write a story or if you write a novel, I mean, what, what do you do? It, it is not covered by patents. So it is covered by copyrights, something which refers to music. Uh, even if you uh, or uh, even if you uh, compose some music, what you can do is write it on a CD or something, uh, file it with the copyright office and you get copyright protection. So that's what copyrights are all about. And then designs. Designs just pertain to the aesthetic appeal, the outside appearance, the outside appearance of a chair, the outside appearance of a car, something like that. It's not technical, just the look, the appearance. And then trade secrets. Trade secrets are nothing but something which is owned by a particular group of people, one or two people. For example, uh, a typical example of a trade secret is the recipe of Coca-Cola, the recipe of Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. These are trade secrets which are not known to anybody else. And the other two things that is lay out of integrated circuits, plant variety, those are very minor. We don't need to discuss much about them. Okay. So uh, as I told you, intellectual property is divided into two categories, industrial property and copyrights. Why this division? You may ask, why can't everything be categorized into one? The thing is, copyrights are basically uh, patents are very technical and they come under industrial property but the, but the main reason why copyrights was excluded out of industrial property is in the earlier days copyrights was just considered as something very literary i mean books music something which was not which was non technical in nature so that's the reason why they were not included under industrial property okay so yeah in, uh, basically, if you take the first thing, everything except for copyrights comes under industrial property. So what is, as, as I told you earlier, you go through this slide, which tells you all about what copyrights are about. Uh, copyrights are about. Copyrights covers literary works, any poems, any theatrical works, music, photographs, architectural designs, everything. See, as I, I mean, uh, as, I, as I'm just telling about copyrights, the one thing which comes into my mind is, there, I mean, last year there was a huge uh, uh, battle between uh, uh, the music maestro Eli Raja and SPB. And the main thing was things were not uh, intellectually covered in the early days, in the 80s and all. So that's the reason why, um, I mean, both were uh, literally in a battle over the, pro uh, the production be belonging to whom? The music belonging to whom? Ma. Ex uh, any doubts or anything? Can I oh, continue? Sir. Yes, yes, continue, sir. Continue. Oh, okay. So that was the main battle. I mean, the the. So if you take a sing, if you take a single song, there is a huge amount of copyright associated with the music, lyrics, the tune, everything plays a part in us. I mean, the choreography, everything. So that was, a, I mean, in the 80s, in the 80s, where most of the hits from Eli Raja were, things were not copyrighted properly. And so that's the reason why the major battle between him and Mr. SBB began. Okay. So this is how, and this is not very important. So this is how, this is a basic hierarchical structure of uh, our office. This is not an essential thing. Okay. So we have, uh, Patent office. Uh, I mean, we have all offices in Chennai except for the uh, designs office as well as the copyright office, because copyright office is essentially in Delhi, and you have to file it online, or you can go directly and file. It is not in Chennai, and designs office is essentially in Kolkata. But you can file it in Chennai. We will forward it to Kolkata. All the other offices are available here in Chennai. Okay, we have our uh, training office in Nagpur. Everybody who's uh, inducted into the intellectual property field, government field, would have to compulsorily go, go uh, six months training at uh, Nagpur. So after that, you'll be inducted into the mainstream. Okay, coming to the main thing. What is a patent? 
But it is nothing but, uh, I mean, I'm putting it in simple terms. You invent something, something very novel and inventive. You invent something. What do you do with it? You come to the patent office, I mean, absolutely the government of India, and you disclose your invention for in exchange for protection. So why do you need protection? As I told earlier, if you don't protect your idea, it's going, it's going to get copied. So we, as a patent office, protect the patentee, uh, that is the applicant's interest. And in exchange for that, after the grant or something, you get to uh, employ your invention in the market for commercial benefits. So that's what a patent is all about. So again, I'm telling. What is a patent? It is a it is a carefully crafted bargain that benefits the public. Okay, you may ask. Okay, patent will benefit the patentee. How it's going to benefit the public? Suppose, um, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll I'll give an example in the pharmaceutical field. A drug exists in the pharmaceutical field, which is very costly. Uh, only one uh, derivative or only one uh, type of the drug is there. So another company invents that same drug, a derivative of the same drug, and they patent it, and they and they hope that they can sell it in the market at a very less price. So it is valuable to the public. And dissemination of knowledge. What is dissemination of knowledge? What will happen if you invent something and keep it to yourself? It goes as a waste. Only when you disclose it to the outside world, people will come to know about it. You can exploit it. At least you can do something in the invention. That is dissemination of knowledge. But if you do disseminate your knowledge without protection, it will be plagiarized. Okay. The protection of individual rights. That is that is the main objective of patent. So see, this is a very technical definition of uh, what a patent is all about. Patent offers. It's it's so simple. Patent offers technical solution to a technical problem. Anything non-technical, it, it won't be granted. So patent is something which gives, which uh, the applicant discloses in te technical form with the patent office, which gives, gives a technical solution for a technical problem. So this is the basic structure of uh, a flowchart kind of a structure of what a patent is. It's very easy to understand. See, what is a patent? I mean, the inventor, having found something, he devises it in the form of a written form in A4 documents. What he has done, he puts everything on paper. He discloses it to the patent office, the government. And if this document satisfies, I, we will discuss about this, all these three things. If these three criteria are satisfied, novelty, inventorship, industrial applicability, if these three things are satisfied, the government or the patent office gives the applicant or the inventor 20 years of freedom to use his invention in the market, he can make commercial benefit out of it. So that's what a patent is. And the time period for which the protection is granted is 20 years from the date of filing. So after that, if you ask me what will happen to the patent, it falls into the public domain and anybody is free to use it. Okay. So this is the principle of patent. Oh, so if uh, an inventor uh, gets a protection for his technological information or, or uh, disclosure to the patent office, what he is getting in return to that? It means that the invention cannot be commercially made, used, distributed, or sold by any other person other than the inventor himself or without the permission of the inventor in return form. So, uh, I mean, whether whether you be a student or a research scholar or a professor or anybody who's in the, in the technical field, and if you protect your invention, that invention of yours, which you have protected, cannot be used by anybody else until and unless he has got your permission. Okay, so, is patent a universal right? The answer is no. No. Patent is essentially a territorial right. That means if you get a patent in India, 
it is valid only in india there is no such term called a uh, universal patent patents are territorial if you get a patent in india it belongs to india i mean you can use your invention only within india if you use it outside uh, india it's going to get again plagiarized if you get a invention if you get a protection in usa it's valid only in us i mean like like that patents are territorial in nature okay as i told you it, it uh, the lifetime of a patent is 20 years from the date of filing okay in what fields can a patent happen any field literally any field pharmaceutical drugs computers electronics biotechnology medical field anything okay so in the field of pharmaceuticals if you take uh, the two main categories where patent will be granted is for one is for the drug uh, previously in india patents were not granted for drugs they were granted only for the chemical process which were implement which was implemented to create the drug but now both the drug as well as the process is patentable and second if you come to the technical field in the engineering field uh, any any technical thing i mean if you take this laptop which i am uh, presenting this uh, info or if you take your mobile phone there are thousands of small parts working together to produce the desired effect if you take the motherboard it would have been uh, manufactured by seagate and they would have protected it if you take the storage it would have been produced by samsung they would have protected it you take the display uh it would have been manufactured by lg they would have protected it so if a company like lenovo or mi wants to produce a uh, uh, a mobile phone thereby incorporating all these things first what they have to do is they have to enter into an agreement with samsung seagate uh lg whatever they have to enter otherwise they have to produce everything themselves it's difficult so what they do is if they find something is reliable from lg they go into an agreement with them get it and then assemble it to them that's what is happening right now so i mean as um, e even if you take your mobile phones most of the mobile phones have snapdragon processors so you, you, do you think a snapdragon is owned by motorola or anything no they go into an agreement get the processor and then they implement it so that's how patenting works okay so what are the advantages of patent patent avoids duplication of research how before uh, before doing any kind of research it is always advisable that you do a search basically in Go at least in google patents or google search and you find if you take robotics you arrive upon till what level robotics has advanced then from that level you do you do research and development and you continue so that's how you avoid duplication and if you do like that it helps in research and production thereby you can always strive and aim to produce a cheaper and better product which will help the economy as well as the country as which will indirectly benefit the public okay so what constitutes an invention any as i told you any product any process which is new inventive step and which is capable of industrial application we'll see those things separately okay so now as i told you just before it can be in a machine or a method okay okay this is a very a, a very simple example this is how i mean what i mean to say is an invention can be so simple like this uh I was uh, little, I wish to tell you very frankly that I was visiting uh, your esteemed institution. I mean, uh, just three years back, and I presented this because it's it's something which has caught my mind so dearly. It's so simple, but it is so it is so useful. I mean, a Nigerian teacher, a Mohammed. I mean, what uh, in in, the, in in those underdeveloped places there is no refrigerator, nothing to store things. So what? what was done is he what he what he did was he put he, uh, two clay portions one is a 
because a smaller thing uh one is a big pot uh, inside is a smaller pot and in, in between the two spaces he filled with moist sand and then he closed the whole uh, he put whatever vegetables or anything which needed to be stored he put them inside and closed with a i mean a moist cloth and as days passed by the water in the sand evaporates through the outer surface thereby carrying heat from the inner core so this principle this very basic principle saved the perishable things from not perishing for up to i mean if you keep some brinjals or something it kept the brinjals fresh for 27 days tomatoes for 3 weeks it's very basic even today if you plan to do this kind of a uh, uh, this thing i mean you can do it in one hour it's so simple but it was so useful in that arid dry region where there was no electricity and no refrigerator so this is how simple that invention can be okay so as i told you if you want to get your invention protected it has to pass through three criteria one is novelty the other one is inventive step the other one is uh industrial applicability we'll see first what is now what is novelty novelty is just it should be new it's as simple as that what you have found out should be new the basic thing i am very frank to tell you the inventor should not have copied it from anywhere it should not have been published in india it should not have been known in india but there is a small uh uh exclusion for the learned society like you people uh if you are students or research scholars or who are the uh, who are maybe if you have found out something new and accidentally you disclose this thing in a, your invention in a in a conference or a presentation or something and then you come to know about patents or oh, then you th then you think oh my god i have disclosed now it has become public property what can i do how can i get a patent the patent act gives an exclusion for that if you accidentally disclose it in a presentation or something from that day of the presentation you have exactly one year to come to patent office and file a application for a patent so that is the only exclusion you have so see these are two, these are some uh, this is um, i mean a single example but two novelty factors there the first is see the bicycle frame in the in the, in the old times it was made of iron which was very very heavy and difficult to move about so now everything is made of carbon fiber alloy even aeroplanes they have uh, very little is made from aluminum the all the other things are made from fibers for carbon fiber alloys so that is an invention because it reduces weight and it is relatively cheaper in uh, nature and the other thing is if we note here the talk was applied to the <coughs> sorry the torque was applied to the front wheel so recently i mean if you see the current day bicycles do you ever come across bicycles like this no the torque is applied uh, from the center coupled by a chain to the back wheel so this is so this improves the efficiency it was proved the efficiency of the cycle and there thereby reducing the strain on the cyclist so this is novelty this is what novelty is okay so as i told you uh, uh, you your novelty uh, i mean if you have if your invention is deemed novel it cannot constitute anything which is prior art so what is prior art anything which is present in the same field before what you have found out before what you have found so that is prior art okay so let's come to inventive step so what is inventive step it is a little bit similar to novelty except for the fact that it has technical advancement what exists in the field and what you have found you minus two, these two things the difference is technical advancement see this this is the technical advancement the first telephone i mean it was either by morse codes or typing or whatever the thing may be and then you have the ringer type and now all touch phones you see it has developed from this to this 
So the technical advancement is called your technical contribution to your invention. So that is what inventive step is all about. What is this? Bulbs. So basically in the, in the earlier days, we all know, in the 80s and 90s, what was the most famous thing other than tube lights? The filament bulbs. Nowadays, they're nearly obsolete. I mean, and then came CFLs, compact fidelity lamps. They were told to conserve 50% of energy. So if you have a 40, 40 watts bulb, the same brightness you'll get using a 20 watt CFL. Now what has happened? You are using LEDs. 40 watt bulb, the same brightness you're getting with the nine watts LED. So that is technical advancement. I hope you're getting my point. Okay, so what is industrial applicability? I mean, this is the last point, but I must say that it serves as an important factor too. The thing is, what you have found out should not be theoretical in nature, but it should be practically applicable in the industry. That's what industrial applicability is all about. Okay, so we are, I think we have crossed 10.30. So I think we need to rush up a bit. Okay, so coming to inventions, what are patentable and what are non-patentable? Okay, so section three, section three of the Patents Act tells you what, I mean, before that I'll tell you, patents, the patent itself is a right which is termed to be negative in nature by us, why? Why do you call patent right as a negative right? Because it prevents others from using your invention if you have protected it. Because it prevents, it is called a negative right. The same way, the Patents Act is also called a negative act. Why? Because throughout the Patents Act, everything which has been mentioned is what has been mentioned by a uh, passed by the parliament and what by, has been mentioned in the book is what cannot be protected. Nowhere it is said that what can be protected. So it is it is indirectly understood that what all which the patent act states that cannot be protected, everything else can, can be protected. So that's how we in patent office interpret and that's how we work. So right now we'll say what all cannot be protected as per the Patents Act, which was passed by the parliament in 1970. Okay, so let's see section three, a subsection, section 3A, frivolous inventions. What is a frivolous invention? It's something funny, it cannot be proved or something. An example is a machine which is which gives an output without an input. What do you call a machine which gives output without an input? First of all, it is possible. Is it possible? No, it is not possible at all. So we call it a perpetual machine. I'm sure you would have, all the engineering people would have gone through it. A perpetual machine, which is supposedly extinct in nature, something which cannot be done. Can you get output without giving any input? No. So if an inventor comes to patent office like that, and my machine is giving output without any input, we simply reject that. Okay, see this thing, it's so funny, you know, a man, I mean, a man is eating noodles or something, I mean, I mean, a man or lady, who the case may be, he, he, he or she is eating noodles, and to cool the noodles, what the what the person is using, I mean, in the chopstick, he or she has attached a small fan. Is this an invention? No, because the fan would have been already protected. He is just hanging the fan on the noodle stick, and is he or she is using to cool the noodles. This is so funny, or this is so frivolous. This is not an invention at all. This. Things like these will be rejected. Okay, so what does section three, subsection B says? Anything which is opposing or opposite or contrary to public order or morality. Just see the examples, human cloning. Human cloning is considered immoral in nature. So that immoral process uh, is strictly prohibited by the patent set. Any device for committing burglary a theft or anything it is against law public order it cannot be protected by patent side and then when you come to pay section 3b again anything which is opposed to human health or animal health or basically to the environment a method of smoking suppose you device and you find a new method of smoking it's not patentable 
And if you find um, a, a, a device for mass destruction, I mean, I'll give you an example for that. Uh, I mean, a, a patent application came to me, an inventor down from the south. He came to me and told, <coughs> this, this will fit rather in section 3A. What he told was, I have found out a, a cyclone destroyer. He told, he was, he was supposed to, he, he had found out a chemical compound. The main ingredient was silver nitrate, I think, something like that. I don't remember. It, it happened in somewhere in 2005. Okay, so he, he told, you have to take this silver nitrate or some that, that chemical compound in a drone or in a airborne thing, right into the eye of the cyclone, spray it, and it will dissolve the cyclone. Is it possible? Is it possible for anybody or anything to go into the eye of the cyclone where most of the intensity of the fo or the force of the cyclone will be concentrated? Is it ever possible? No. We may have seen some movies like Twister or something like that. But those are all movies. But in real life, if you consider going into the eye of the cyclone, you can't even move close to the eye of the cyclone. So that was considered, that was, I rejected that. I, I mean, patent office rejected that, quoting either section 3A or 3B. I'm just giving it as an example. OK, so this, this is section 3C, which basically tells you no discoveries are patentable. What can be patentable? Inventions. There is a huge difference between invention and patentable. Invention is something which didn't exist before, and you totally found it out. Discovery was you just stumbled upon something which existed before. So section 3C basically tells that any discovery is not Patentable. OK, so section 3D. This is not very much useful to engineers. It is very, very, very useful to the drug field, the pharmaceutical field. Anyway, we have to know this. The first thing is any new form of a known substance is not patentable. For an example, all these things, drugs, store vastin and everything, exist in more than one form. So if the first form is protected, then somebody comes to the office of the second form, it is not protectable. Any discovery of a new property or new use of a substance. We all know that uh, paracetamol has uh, antipyretic property. It, has, uh, it is used for uh, reducing fever or something. But if somebody comes to patent office and says that paracetamol can also for, be used for reducing inflammation, it, can it be protected? No, because it's just the new use of a known substance. The known substance is paracetamol. Similarly, ethyl alcohol was used as a solvent previously, but then somebody discovered that it has another use for anti-knocking property in at automobiles. Can it be protected? No, it is just a new use. And the third thing, new use of a known process, machine, or apparatus until it results in a new product. Okay, I'll give you some more example. Aspirin. Aspirin was previously used for used as a blood thinner for heart patients. Aspirin. You, you might have uh, come uh, about it, but when, you, when somebody uh, uh, somebody said that it can also be used to be, uh, for pain purposes. So it, it is not patentable. But, but the exclusion is if you have a new method of producing aspirin in a cheaper way, in a more efficient way, then probably the new method of manufacture of aspirin may be patentable, may be patentable provided it satisfies the step of novelty, inventive step, and industrial applicability. Okay, this is this is a bit interesting. See this example. Uh, what is chloroquine? Chloroquine, what is chloroquine used for? It is primarily used for curing malaria. Okay, so a new use of chloroquine, except for anything other than malaria, treating malaria is not patentable. Recently, recently, this chloroquine is of great interest. Can you tell me why? It was discovered that chloroquine may be used for treating COVID-19. So is this parentable? Can pay, uh, somebody come to parent office and say that I'm, I have discovered that, I have discovered, not invented, I have discovered that chloroquine can also be used to treat COVID-19. Is it parentable? No. 
Okay, so section 3D continued. I mean, this is not very essential. It is purely belonging to the pharmaceutical field. So how everything is decided? What is patentable? What is not patentable? I mean, I told you in section 3D, there are main three criteria. N known use is not patentable. New form is not patentable. So how does the examiner, I mean, the examiner is the first step in the patent office to whom the uh, application goes. How does he examine it? He, is, he does everything on a case-to-case -case basis, file-to-file -file basis, purely depending on what you disclose to patent office. So, so, so it is very important that it is very essential to present to patent office what you have found out in a very clear way. Okay, section three, subsection E. What a mere admixture. Again, this also refers to the pharmaceutical field. Uh, for example, combiflam is not payable because combiflam is just uh, a mixture of uh, brufen and paracetamol. Two known things combined together. Okay, section three F. This will be of uh, importance to mechanical people. I will. I have to say that when you combine two things together, they have to work dependently. Then only they can be patented. If they work independently, this combination will not be allowed under Section 3F. An example is an umbrella fitted with a fan. Uh, in uh, I mean, this, this is present in Jap Japan. I mean, you open the umbrella, and if you feel it is too hot, you put the switch, there will be a fan in the umbrella which gives you cool air. This is not patentable. Simply, it's the incorporation of two already patented things, a fan as well as an umbrella. What is this? A mouse with a printer. A mouse has its own way of functioning, pointing the printer to print out things. Two, new, two old things combined. This is not patentable. A laser pointer. I mean, if I am presenting this in, uh, presentation to you in, in your esteemed institution, I'll be using a pointer like this with a torch, with a laser pointer, pointing this presentation. It's, it's a combination of a torch as well as a pointer. Two old things combined. So. It's not patentable again. Uh, I'm rushing it. Please bear with me. We have very less time. So any method of agriculture or horticulture or any medical method, anything is not patentable. If you ask me why any medical method or any horticultural method, any agricultural method, anything is not patentable, why if you ask me? I'll give you a very simple answer. If a farmer uh, decides to patent his way method of new method of agriculture or something and if patent office grants it will any other farmer in the in in the field be able to use that method of farming no he will be a, he can only enter into an agreement with the farmer who has protected it pay him a huge amount of royalty then only he can use it so again the royalty and all the money involved where will it indirectly come upon to the custom same thing if a doctor happens to protect his uh, method of treatment, a new method of treating cancer. Already cancer treatments are very, very costly. If a doctor stumbles upon a new method of treating cancer and he gets protection from patent office, if another doctor wants to use it, can he directly use it? No, because it has been patented. He has to go into an agreement or get permission from the first doctor, pay him a large amount of fees, and then only he gets the permission to use that patented method. Then, and what all money he has paid, where will he pass on to? It will be passed down to the patient. Already cancer treatments are huge, heavy. So again, if this happens, it is a great loss to the society. So any medical treatment or method is not patentable. Even if you consider med medical methods, surgical methods, curative methods, prophylactic methods, diagnostic methods, therapeutic methods, nothing is patentable. Okay, but but I tell you, any biomedical device is patentable. I tell you one example. Uh, I mean, you, your your college will have biomedical engineering. I believe. I suppose. I'm not very sure. I mean, in, in 2007 or something, an application came to me for uh, uh, for uh, an operation setup. Uh, I mean, in olden days, the X-ray X-ray theater was separate. Uh, the CT scanner, the MRI thing was separate. Everything was separate. One doctor had combined everything together on a live operating table uh, on which a live scan or live MRI will be taken. And by watching the live MRI or something, the patient can be operated upon, thereby saving critical time. You don't need, we'll, you don't need to send the patient to a separate MRI room, take MRI, wait for the result. Obviously, it involves a lot of time. 
So in that, uh, in the, I don't remember the title. In that combined OT operation theater, just by watching the patient on the MRI screen live, the doctor was able to perform the operation, thereby saving lives, increasing efficiency, and reducing cost. So that patent was granted. OK, so these are all, again, discoveries. Any plants, animals, seeds, this one, they are not patentable. Microorganisms are not patentable, but genetically modified organisms may be patentable. This is, uh, this is a bit important for you. Math I mean, section 3, subsection K, mathematical methods. If you, if you have a new method of cube routing, a square routing, it is not patentable. But technical mathematical methods may be patentable. A, a method of calculating signal to noise ratio of a communication method, it may be patentable. Business methods are not patentable. Again, why? If a businessman finds a new method, patents it, then how can the other person use it? He can't use it, no. So that's why business methods are not patentable. The most important thing, algorithms and computer programs are not patentable they are purely coming under copyrights. So if you, if you, anybody from your esteemed institutions happens to write a new computer program, you can't patent it, you can only copyright it. You bear it in mind, it's very important. But there is a, there is a exclusion. The myth, if, you, if any program needs to be compiled and executed on a laptop or a computer, and then you will get a technical effect that technical effect or that method which is performed by the program or the algorithm may be patentable. Okay. Okay. So section 3i, it tells you that any literary, dramatical, as I told you before, these are not patentable. Why? These are covered by copyrights. Any method of playing a game, teaching, learning a language, anything is not patentable. However, devices, new game boards like Monopoly or something may be patentable. But why a method of teaching or learning is not patentable? Again, it's all based on the economy. A teacher devises a new method of learning. He or she patents it. And how will the other school or the teacher will be able to use it? He has to pay royalty. And naturally, where will the fees be, uh, where the expense will be sent to? Again, the parent. It hugely affects economy. Okay, section 3N, it tells you that spoken words, visual display, all these things are not patentable because they are just copy, covered by either copyrights or trademarks. This is uh, covered by Semiconductor Act, section 3P, traditional knowledge, that is any traditional knowledge which is belonging to the field like the, the medicinal property of neem, turmeric, anything. These are all uh, you never know who found out the thing, these things. It, it cannot be proved, so it is not Patentable, okay. And section four of the Patents Act tells you that any invention which uses uh, atomic particles or compounds like uranium, plutonium, and radioactive materials are not patentable. And if at all any application comes to the patent office using radioactive particles, what as a controller I have to do is, I have to refer it to the central government to the uh, atomic energy def uh, department, they will scrutinize the application. And if it is not harmful to the security of, of the Indian, of our country, then it will be referred back to us and we can proceed. Otherwise, the application will be clamped. Okay. In any inventions related to defense, any, uh, suppose if an applicant comes to a parent office telling that, um, I have found out a gun or something. Can it be patented? No, because it is seriously harmful to the nation's integrity. Okay, now coming from non-patentable things to patent application types. Ordinary application, provisional, complete, conventional, PCT, patent of addition and division. We'll see them one by one. Okay, what is a provisional application? I'll tell you, if uh, anybody from the college has found out something and he or she needs more time to develop that. It's a basic idea and you need more time to arrive upon a particular invention in detail. So what you can do is you come to, pay, <coughs> sorry, you come to patent office, file the basic idea what you have and then go away. And then from that data filing, you have got literally 12 months to develop your invention based on what you have disclosed to patent office. You develop fully, 
within 12 months, you come to patent office and file the whole thing. So you get 12 months time to protect your idea fully. So that is what a provisional application. Okay, so advantages of provisional, as I told you, it gives you priority. So that date which you file the provisional is your filing date. And in that time, if you think that you don't have any financial support, you can you can ask your institution. You can you can ask any outside company or any anybody. To, you get you can get into an agreement for financial support. You get time to develop your innovation. So, okay. So this is complete specification. This is the format which we need when you file a patent of the patent office. It has to be in this format. Yeah, this has to be in that format. The first one is the title, the title, and then the field or the background with the prior art. Prior art is what exists in the field prior to what you have found out, prior art. Then what you have done in short. I mean, everything in A4 sheet paper, in short. What you have found out, in short. Then you give what, uh, and then you give the diagrams then a long and lengthy explanation of the diagrams, then the claims. What is a claim? This is a claim. I mean, the claims are the most important things of the patent application. So you have found out a chair. Then what exactly is the claim which is pertaining to the chair? See the example, a chair comprising a triangular seat, a triangular seat, three legs attached to set seat, one, two, three, and the backrest attached to the triangular seat, one armrest. So what I'm telling you is the claims are the crux of the invention. If you arrive to, if you plan to draft a specification on your own, you have to draft the claims very, 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 very clearly. So if you found, a, if you happen to devise a chair like this, the claim should be like this. Secondly, okay, now this is a rocking chair. See how the claim has been drafted. A seating device. They have see the claim is a bit broad. They have not even told that it is a chair. They're telling it's a seating device comprising a flat area to sit. Rockers coupled to the legs. There are four legs, and rockers are coupled, rocking chair, and then a back. So this is how typically a patent application containing a claim should look like. And again, we are coming to patent of addition and patent of division. So what is patent of division? A single application should contain only one patent. If the pay, if the controller thinks that there are more than one, there is more than invention which is sticking in the application, he will tell the applicant to divide it and he'll ask the applicant to proceed with two different applications. So what is patent of addition? Patent of addition is nothing but, uh, if the, the, the applicant has filed it, and then when he's again working on the same invention to improve something, he has improved a little bit and he wants to add something more means, he can file a patent of addition. Some more, he can file it in a different, as a different application and file it with patent office. That is called patent of addition. It will go along with the main application and expire along with the main application. We will rush up here. Okay. Okay, so we'll see how, uh, what, are the, what are the different modes of filing? This is important. We'll just rush it and time will be exactly the, okay. So normal route, convention route, and PCT route. Normal route is nothing but you have found out something, you come to patent office, file it, there's a normal route. Convention route is India is a party to the Paris Treaty. And Paris Treaty, there are, uh, it, it is just an agreement which was signed in Paris and there are nearly 180 countries in it. As per that, you can file in any of the 180 countries. And when you come to, uh, and that the, the first filing date will be given the priority. And within one year, you can go to go and file in any of the 180 countries. So you are saving one month here, one year there. You get 12 months of priority there. So what is PCT rule? See, I told you there is nothing like an international application, but this PCT rule, Patent Corporation Treaty rule, is sometimes considered as an international route, but it, this is just a processing stage. See, the international applications are governed by WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, which is situated in Geneva, Switzerland. So it has authorized some countries 
to receive these applications, which are supposed to be international applications. So what? So India is a receiving authority. So when you file uh, an international application with India, it is transmitted to WIPO in Geneva, which in transmits, transmits the application to uh, International Search Authority, ISA, and IPE, International Preliminary Examination Authority, which is, which, I mean, India is also a party to all these things. So they will do the basic examination of your invention. They'll see whether it is patentable, whether it is non-patentable, They'll, they'll do a search and uh, see whether you have copied it from somewhere. And then they <coughs> transmit it to WIPO, which will be given to the applicant. So now the applicant has, but this involves a lot of fee, of course. The, the applicant has got, has got a basic idea in his hand whether he can proceed with the application or stop it. So if everything is OK, then from WIPO, World Industrial Property Organization, after he has got all the reports, he can branch out to various countries and abide with the various rules of the various countries, which will, and then he can get separate grants in separate countries. As I told, there is no universal patent. Even if he goes to the international route, he has to come to international countries, which are party to WIPO, and then he can get grants in separate countries. The only advantage is this process takes zero to 31 months. So the applicant gets 31 months to think about his invention and he can stop anywhere at this point if he decides not to proceed. So the time period which he gets to process application is 31 months. And if he is not satisfied with the reports of the ISA or IPAA, he can stop without wasting his money. Okay. So we'll stop with uh the procedure okay what happens when an application comes to the patent office you file something it comes to the patent office so what happens the front the front office receives it then it is uh the whole thing is published and what uh, what happens is it is then sent to an examiner i told you the examiner is the basic level uh, the entry level in the patent, patent office who's who looks after your application he looks for everything like uh, patentability, like uh, all the sections which we were discussing, 3A, 3B, 3C. And then he looks into it formally also, whether you have correct, whether you have paid the fees fully and filled up all the forms or anything. He does all the search, novelty search, everything. And and he writes, and he, uh, nowadays everything is online. He does everything um, uh, in a report and sends it to the controller. And when I'm getting the file, what I do is I just cross check it and send it to the applicant. Then the applicant or the, uh, who has filed the patent gets six months time to reply to it. So he goes through all the objections which patent office has sent him. He reads everything and replies back to patent office. And then it comes to again to me, to the controller through the examiner. And then when I go through the application, I cross-check whether the applicant has satisfied all the objections raised by patent office. If everything is okay, I grant it, we grant it. If there is anything pending, we offer one more chance to the applicant, a hearing. It can be either a physical hearing, you can come to office or video conferencing. So if everything goes okay, then a hearing will be held. If everything goes okay, the patent will be granted or else the application is refused under section 15. So this is the basic uh, structure of how examination is carried out in the patent office. Filing, we have to publish it. And then uh, this process uh, we haven't discussed because of lack of time. Uh, we, you have to file uh, something called request for examination which is a separate form. When you file this form, it comes to the exam, the technical examination stage. So you technically it is examined, then it is granted or refused. And finally, the decision by the controller. So it is 11 o'clock, I think. Should we stop here, sir? Yes, yes, sir. This over, we can, will stop, sir. Then we will, uh, huh? Okay, okay, sir, because uh, the stipulated time is still 11, I think. I think. Yeah. Now it's time, uh, 11. Okay. Let us 
move on to the questionnaire session some of our students and faculties are in uh, online okay sir sure i'll wait i i can take questions sir yeah 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 students and faculty can uh, raise some questions to our uh, expert sir good morning sir can you hear me ah yes yeah. sir i can hear you proceed okay sir uh, my name is gautam i am an assistant professor in triple e department at selum college of technology oh yes sir tell me sir uh, actually i am having two questions to you sir shall i ask yes sir sure sir you can ask okay so my first question is uh, you had clearly said that uh, if we uh, file a patent uh, across india uh, ah. it doesn't uh, applicable to other countries yes sir yes sir so is there any options or uh, any procedures to obtain the patent rights uh, worldwide ah that, that, that is why i was telling sir there are two processes one is the conventional route i mean the paris treaty and other is just one i was discussing about the just a minute sir uh, okay okay sir my second question is uh, you uh, already uh, said that uh, the patent uh, license is 20 years 20 years sir okay so is there any options available to extend my uh, uh, license after 20 years sir no sir it, it expires after 20 years there is no provision to extend the lifetime okay okay thank you sir thank you sir thank you any other questions from student side S students sir. yeah yeah Good afternoon, sir yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah good, uh, good morning sir you can ask me ha uh, good morning sir i am ram kumar from triple e third year sir yeah good morning tell me sir uh, i have a doubt uh, how long time to the, get a patent rights so time duration uh, the time duration now exactly is 3 years from the date of filing that is tentative today i mean uh, right now we are processing applications which were filed in 2017 to 18 okay sir. so previously uh, previously the time period was huge like 7 uh, oh. years or 8 years or something but now the time period has come drastically less with the induction of more examiners and now all india level we have we have almost 400 uh, examiners or something so the time period has been considerably reduced so uh, right now if you take 2018 cases are have being handled so my, so the time period is getting reduced in, in uh, i mean in another one year or something the time period will be reduced to hardly to 2 years from the date of filing to the date of grant but i tell you there is a, a process called expedited examination if you file a form called form 18 and you pay separate fees the whole process will be over in almost 6 months but it requires additional fee okay sir thank you sir thank you sir any other questions students or faculty Okay sir uh, i think uh, there are there are no more questions from student side okay sir thank you uh, okay uh, thank you thank you very much sir we had a nice uh, wonderful session we have learned a lot that uh, what is to be patented what is not to be patented with uh, demonstration that you said no the umbrella with a fan oh ah, yes sir <laughs> that's amazing then as well as that uh, mcr that uh, that the hospital attachment you said no that yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yes, yeah, yeah it's, it's really amazing that the procedures and all uh, it's very useful for us uh, that our uh, i hope uh, our uh, faculty and students and other participants those, those who are on online streaming also getting benefited from your speech uh, thank you very much sir thank you for coming over here let us thank you sir. Ask, thank you sir again i ask our principal sir say, say something uh, to our ah, okay team. thank you very much dr navin sir Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That was a very, very useful and interesting session. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, faculty and student must have learned how to uh, what is the importance of uh, uh, filing reg uh, patent registration and uh, procedure for filing it. Thank It's you. Very sir. useful session for for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all participants. Okay. Thank you.